Hey, what's up guys? I'm chiming in again here uh, with regards to uh, Marshall McLuhan's Four Laws of Media, and I'm gonna link to an excellent and brief outline by Andrew McLuhan um, with regards to the uh, kind of high level details of what this is. And again, it's from Marshall McLuhan's last published work. It's published posthumously in 1985, The Four Laws of Media. And Marshall and his son, Eric, worked diligently to discover the laws of media and they found the first two laws uh, within the first 30 minutes. And then it took a few years to find the next two laws and they have been looking for the last 30 years and ongoing to find a fifth and they have not done so, but they have not, um, or the door isn't closed on there being a fifth law. But I've uh, been thinking about these four laws and how they operate and work with each other. And it's a great practical tool you can use once you kind of get a initial understanding of them to observe and to um, situate yourself and, and observe any media. And this could be anything. This can be from social media to the smartphone to the alphabet. Any human artifact, anything that humans have made uh, from uh, you know a dumpster to uh, an air conditioning, um, you know, with philosophical uh, systems, all of this can be studied through utilizing and leveraging these four laws. And the four laws, again, and this kind of conception of these four laws came into my head, the way that you kind of picture them is you have these four quadrants. And these four laws are not necessarily chronological. Um, they all kind of happen at once and you can use one law when it becomes obvious to you to kind of ascertain what's happening with the, uh, with the rest, with the other three. And one thing that I'm thinking about is what happens if we put uh, an icon of Christ or icons in general at the center of this this project and study them using these four laws. Um, so I'm gonna be talking more about that, but this idea, this organic kind of idea came into my head. And I've been thinking about how these four laws operate and work with each other. So again, the four laws are, um, uh, what does a media, so that's the question you're asking, uh, what does it retrieve? What does it enhance or amplify? What does it reverse and what does it obsolesce? So if you think and you start at the bottom left hand corner, what does it retrieve from the past? What is old that is made new? What does it enhance? What does it reverse when it pushed, um, pushed, pushed the, to its furthest? And then what does it obsolesce, right? So thinking about like a flower growing, right? So what does it retrieve? What does it amplify? What does it reverse? And what does it obsolesce, right? It's kind of like the cycle of life the life cycle, it's all kind of like these, the four seasons. Um, this kind of organic way of looking at and understanding uh, things like, like media. So have a little fun with this, guys. You should go ahead and, and check out this article that I'm linking here. It gives you kind of a good little graph to, to utilize it and just start having fun with it. Uh, don't take it too serious and take any media. Uh, do Facebook if you want. Put it in the center of this kind of diamond pattern and then ask what does social media, what does it retrieve? Like the, the way that these media, these landscapes, these environments change human consciousness. So what does social media uh, retrieve from the past? What does it enhance? What if pushed too far does it reverse? And what does it obsolesce? Again, I've been thinking about the icon and how we can think of that. You know, what does it, what does the icon retrieve? It retrieves the logos. Um, what does it enhance? It enhance, an icon enhances communion. What does it reverse? It reverses, ironically, idolatry or idols or idol worship. And what does it um, obsolesce? Um, I think that this fourth one is, is akin to idols again. So what does the icon, the media of the icon, what does it retrieve from the past? What does it amplify or enhance? What does it reverse when pushed too far? And what does it obsolesce? Uh, obsolesce doesn't mean essentially go away. It means just, um, you know, not made, you know, put put down a few levels on the hierarchy in terms of impact, um, right? So there's this uh, kind of keep this idea in mind when, when working through it. And I'd love to hear some thoughts and some ideas of what we can study, what we can put in the middle of these four laws and, and observe and, and observe. And um, another more thoughts, kind of words that came to mind in, in terms of what Marshall was doing. Uh, when he studied media landscapes or media environments. Um, remember, the media environment becomes invisible in a sense. And he talked about 
being like a safe cracker, right? So you're listening and you're probing, trying to hear the different clicks and sounds while you're working to crack a safe until you kind of crack it open. Um, another kind of a synonym for this idea is this, the palpate. Uh, if you go to an acupuncturist, in order for them to find the meridian points, they will palpate the skin or a doctor um, when he is checking kind of the stomach will pal palpate, so just push a little bit and feel. So this, it, it goes to the central root of, of um, McLuhan's theory of communication, which is an, uh, an irony because he doesn't have a theory of communication. He doesn't bring a moral stance to, to these media environments that he's studying because he says that if you bring a moral stance, you're looking to either verify or, uh, or, or affirm your theory instead of observing uh, what is happening in the background and, and kind of uh, seeing the effects and whatnot. So, um, yep, just quickly, guys, wanted to chime in again. Please check these out. Uh, I think there's a lot of um, uh, a lot to be a lot to be mined with these ideas, with this idea spe specifically of the tetrad, right? The four laws of media. So, hope everybody's well, and I'll talk to you soon.